All right, it is 134. Thanks so much for joining us here on The Shilling Show. 977-1070 is the phone number. We are Nutrition for Your Mind, and we appreciate you being here with us for lunch, 1 to 2 p.m. every weekday, and Saturdays for the best of The Shilling Show for breakfast at 6 to 9, and sometimes they even sneak it in on Sunday mornings from 6 to 9. Also, now podcasting. So if you miss a show, please go over to the WINA.com website. Go over. Here's the easiest way to find it. Just follow these directions because it can be a little confusing. Just go over to the programs area at the top of the page on the right-hand side and uh, go down to the Shilling Show, open that up, and at the bottom of that page, you will hear recent broadcasts in their entirety of the Shilling Show, which you can download to your iPod and take with you to work out, or you can listen on your computer or direct your friends and family to those broadcasts if you would like them to hear things that you heard here on the Shilling Show. And we do thank our audience greatly for your loyalty to this program. All right, at 135, we're continuing our conversation with Bill Redpath, Libertarian candidate for United States Senate in Virginia, redpath2008.com. And Bill, tell us again where you'll be speaking tonight. I'll be speaking at UVA, Newton Hall, South Meeting Room, 7 p.m. Anybody and everybody are welcome. All right. We talked about national security being a very important issue. Uh, how is it that national security can and should be strengthened? Well, I think it can be strengthened, first of all, by focusing on trying to do less, I guess, uh, and, and in that process, uh, being able to do it better, focusing on the United States and defense of it and the people and property in it, as opposed to uh, various foreign interventions, of course, most notably the Iraq War, but also we have, you name it, <laughs> you name the country and we've got troops there. We spend as much on, the, uh, on national defense as the rest of the world combined we should get troops out of Korea, we should get troops out of Japan, we should get troops out of Europe, we should get, we have troops in the UK. I don't understand that. So um, it, it, it's dangerous and it's expensive and um, we, we need to get our fiscal house in order, that's for sure. And uh, we, we, it's something we just can't afford anymore, nor do I think it enhances our security, really. Is there any place in the world that uh, you would favor the United States having troops or auxiliary bases or should we completely withdraw to within our own borders? I think we should withdraw to within our own borders. Uh, however, I would say that, I mean, if there is any justification right now for international involvement in the, uh, of the U.S. military, uh, it's in fighting al-Qaeda. That's it. That's the only justification I can see right now. Uh, and uh, I think al-Qaeda remains an enemy of the United States. I think that's a, a, a reasonable <laughs> statement given the, the history over the past seven years of what has happened. Uh, but uh, beyond that, I just don't see it. We shouldn't be involved in nation building anywhere. If, uh, for example, I want to play this out a little bit because I think this is an area where some people do take issue with the Libertarian Party in general. If Iran shuts down the Straits of Hormuz, do we have uh, an interest to get involved in that and try and open up the flow of oil for our own economy, or do we just let them do that? Um, how do we handle situations like that? I think there are enough other sources of oil in this world that uh, we could get along. I think ultimately they, uh, I think they would relent, uh, but uh, there, you know, we can get oil from uh, other sources as well. The second, my understanding is the second largest deposit of oil in this world is in Alberta, in Canada, uh, after the Middle East. So I think uh, ultimately if they intend to manipulate uh, oil markets uh, doing that, it's not going to work very long. News Radio 1070, WINA, it's 137-977-1070 is the phone number if you have a question or comment for our guest, Bill Redpath. Let's talk about the economy. What is happening to our economy right now as, as we watch this wild stock market fluctuation even today? It looks like it's been about a 700-point swing one way or the other. What's going on and why? Well, I think that this has come about uh, largely due to the subprime mortgage crisis. I think that's what started it, but I think that there's been uh, an overextension of the American government and uh, the American people uh, in the debt markets and ultimately, uh, and other things as well, but I, I think that that's what it comes down to is that, that there's uh, suddenly there was a realization that there's a lot of bad debt out there and uh, I believe it was the late economist Rudiger Dornbusch who said that financial crises take longer to develop than you think they will but when they happen they happen faster 
than you think they will. And this has been developing. I read there was an independent institute study about this that just came out, I think, this week that said that, that there was the process actually started in the early 1990s when uh, lending standards began to be degraded in the housing market. And uh, of course, there was a Community Reinvestment Act that goes back to 1977, but there was that. Uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, uh, they have uh, been purchasing. Uh, paper, that uh, risky uh, mortgage paper, largely at the direction of the federal government, and there were accounting irregularities in, I believe, 03 and 04, and as a part of their pen penance, they say, okay, we're going to be good, we're going to put extra emphasis on buying uh, this debt uh, on, that uh, is backed by riskier mortgages because we want to direct funds to certain types of, of buyers out there. And it was a whole uh, amalgamation of things that suddenly came together in 2008 and, and intensely so in, in September of 08. So I think that is the, the root cause of this. One of our presidential candidates and one of our local candidates for United States Congress is putting the blame on this on the free market and saying that uh, this was because of uh, deregulation of the markets and that's the problem. Was that the problem here? Is that there was too much free market capitalism or was there something else behind all this? I think there was a lot else behind this. Um, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that everybody in the private sector behaved appropriately here. I'm, I'm not going to make that assertion. But there was a, an excellent article about this a couple of weeks ago in Barron's, I believe, where basically this fellow said, yeah, you know, there were, there were some things in the private sector that shouldn't happen, but hey, government, we couldn't have done this without you. And that is absolutely the case. Government has its fingerprints all over this, and if they hadn't been uh, trying to make institute or push political decisions into the private marketplace for housing in the United States, uh, I, don't, I really don't think this would have occurred. How about the strength of the dollar? Is that an issue for you? Do we worry if our dollar is weak against the euro and, and against other international uh, currencies? Or is that something that we just let happen if it happens? I'm in favor of a strong dollar. However, I think that we can best have a strong dollar by properly managing our uh, fiscal affairs. But also, uh, as long as we have a Federal Reserve System, which I think we ought to take a look at alternatives to that, but as long as we have a Federal Reserve System, Congress should tell Ben Bernanke or anybody who replaces him in the future, uh, look, you have one job. Don't worry about interest rates. Don't worry about the unemployment rate. Focus on inflation and keep inflation every year between zero and two percent. And and if it gets outside that range, you're fired. And and we need to have the Federal Reserve Federal Reserve focus on that if they do and are successful in maintaining the value of the dollar, we will have a strong dollar. That'll be the result. All right. It is one forty two here on the Schilling Show. 977-1070 is the phone number. Bill Redpath, Libertarian candidate for United States Senate in Virginia, is our guest. If you want to read more about his positions, please go to redpath2008.com. And The Shilling Show will return right after this.